all that to say, um, there's a lot of different places, even here in New York, right? Like I could be in, you know, Brooklyn or something, you know, they still shooting in Brooklyn. Like despite gentrification, they still shooting <laughs> in Brooklyn. They still shooting in Harlem. <laughs> despite gentrification is still real. And, you know, if, if you're not dealing with those things, um, you can most certainly have a positive attitude and, you know, see the, the positive in your life. Um, and if you are dealing with those things, then it's a deep for conversation and we'll do that one next week. <laughs> Stay safe in the streets. <laughs> That's the goal. How you doing? Doing amazing. How you doing? I'm also amazing. Oh, admittedly, yeah. I have a lot of stuff, going, a lot of stuff going on. And I thought about how I was going to come on here and I didn't want to be like all down and out and, uh, you know, I'm doing all right. Blah, blah, blah. So, Cause you know what? At the end of the day, it's all first world problems. None of it is, you know what I'm saying? Like anything crazy. So um, I'm literally just trying to clean my, my uh, home. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what's got me bugged out this morning is I'm trying to clean I, I do. I, I do concur that there's a first world problem. <laughs> you got kids. Place is messy. Needs to be. So I went to. Um, all right. This has nothing to do with the conversation today. I'm sure, but I'm gonna get this out anyway because this is our show. We do whatever we want. If you this don't like facts. it, you can click on to something else. <laughs> but I'm gonna talk about my stuff because this is about mental wellness, and I can't. I can't leave this stuff inside of me. It needs to get out. All right. So. There's toys everywhere, Ken, and I can't take it anymore. So last night, I at like nine o'clock, Target closes at ten by us. I got in the car and I left my family at home and I went to Target and I bought like two hundred dollars worth of um, uh, containers. You know the clear plastic. Oh, nice. You know, yes, bins. yes. We do have them. Yes. I bought so many of them, and I bought like hangers, clothes hangers, and I bought like just like stuff to organize, you know? And I came back home and I was tired. So I went to sleep and I woke up today and it was just like with a vengeance, man. I'm like, all this stuff is going into containers. And I was like, when my kid gets home, she'll have to figure out where everything is on her own. That's not my problem, man. All I know is it's going to be on the floor. The stuff, look, because the stuff was on the floor before, it's still on the floor. It's just in a bin now. You know what? At least I didn't get the uh, the bins that's like dark colored. You can't see inside, right? Oh, the it's, gray ones. <laughs> yeah, it's like a clear bin, so you could see what's inside of it. And the same. Listen, man. I before I was married with children, I I, I got the OCD, and everything, everything was, was clean, very exactly where I wanted it to be, and that's not my life anymore. And I understand that. I accept it. I love my life. I just need to de-stress and decluttering helps me to de-stress. And isn't that what this show is about? Giving people practical tools to help them <laughs> <laughs> go to Target and buy some bins. It's Target, by the way. Target. Target. Bring a All coupon. Right. <laughs> if you, you seem better now that you got to release. I'm, I feel better. I feel like, that's the show. I mean, we don't even, I do the intro, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> but <laughs> so welcome to Products of Circumstance. Uh, this is the podcast with Ken Skeen and myself, Fett and Joseph. We discuss mental health and mindset matters through the lens of black men. This show is clearly, truly unscripted, unfiltered, and it's mostly unedited. All of this is being left in. And we choose our topics randomly. I did not think we were going to talk about cleaning and Target and stuff today. Um, Ken actually has a topic that we'll, we can talk about. Um, but before we get into that, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> the topic is actually uh, having a positive mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Unscripted. You couldn't write this because I, I was like, I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer. I'm not going to do there's it. A, there's a reason I chose this topic. And the reason is 
this was around the time last year that I came to Fenton, gave him a phone call and said, hey, my good friend, I know that you are a uh, producer for a podcast. And I was thinking about starting one. And it was around this time. It was April of last year. So I was like, wow, you know what? It's been a year since we came. Let's come back around and do a show on having a positive mindset. <laughs> It all works out. Yeah, that's why I was mulching last night. I was thinking to myself, wow, let's, let's do positive mindset. This is so relaxing out here. Carrying around 70 pound bags of mulch all day. It's a lot of mulch. It's a lot of mulch. It's Congratulations. Mulch. It's been a year. I'm st- I'm not, I'm not, oh, th- oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I thought you went on the mulch. I'm like, yeah, I'm not even done. It's been a year. Wow, right? The whole year. It's crazy. Yeah. So I wrote something down. So having a positive mindset. All right. So it doesn't change your situation, right? Mm but it changes your ability to deal with the situation, right? I do it again. So a positive mindset doesn't change your situation, changes your ability to deal with the situation. Um, so Fenton just shared his story, <laughs> you know, having OCD and making sure everything's clean in, in one spot. Oh, I get it. Trust me. I've got four at home yeah, now, but only three of them, you know, just leave stuff everywhere. But, um, not stressing to the point that you're having a mental breakdown because believe it or not, and people may be listening to this all around the world, but here in the United States, there's a lot of first world problems. We tend to overstretch in our head, in our minds that, Oh my God, it's the end of the world. The nail in my tire is going to stop everything I have to do to calm down. You know, the, the toys on the floor, <laughs> it's oh, all coming no. to an end. The, the sky is falling. Chill out. Uh, change your mindset. Come up with a solution. <laughs> You'll figure it out. <laughs> but I uh, know that that comes with everything. All right. So, I mean, you've if anyone's been listening to us here and there, have you heard some of our stories? Um, me personally, you know, going to different you know, changing careers twice in my life, um, being laid off multiple times with, with jobs I've been with. And listen, when you're going, we, we've said it, you know, you're going through a storm, but your goal is to get out of the storm. Don't run away from it. It's going to catch up to you eventually. Hmm. Right. But having that mindset of, you know, this is my situation now, not my situation for the rest of my life. And it could last a day, a month, a year, 10 years. And it's hard to keep that mindset, but you got to remember to keep it as much as you can. You got to hold on to that positive mindset of it's going to be okay. I've had worse things. I've had bad things happen to me in life before, and I got through it. And look who, look where I'm at now. Um, even just what I, it was during the pandemic. You know, I was working, if uh, people don't know, I was in, I'm in auto sales. I'm a sales manager. And when the pandemic hit, what was that over three years ago now, right? Look how fast three years went. But over three years ago, you know, I lost my job. I was out. Three kids at home, mortgage, wife, gross, you name it. First world problems, I get it. But um, no check coming in. (laughs) That's rough for, you know, four months. The positive part about it was everyone was home. (laughs) Everyone was on lockdown. And I got to spend time with the family. So my positive mindset was, yes, I'm out of work right now. Thankfully, we live in a country where we do get checks coming in from the government because there's places like where my family's from in Belize. Right. There is no government assistance. So but um, I got my positive mindset on that was I can spend time with my family because in the uh, in my career, we work a lot of hours. You know, I have a lot of late days. I work on weekends. So it was a nice four months of hanging out with my kids hanging out with my wife, you know, we were doing uh, Zoom calls with the friends. It, it was it was fun. So, again, that was a positive mindset. And instead of being in a negative space or like a dark place in my own head, that made the best of it. Mm-hmm. That probably helped a lot. I mean, like, I know a lot of people had major mental health issues during the pandemic. I found that all right. I, I'll just speak from my personal experience of people that like I know. I found that the people who struggle the most were the single people. 
just not having somebody to talk to, you know, I'm sure that there were not, not, I'm going to say, I'm sure. I know that there was definitely a spike in like, um, you know, relationship issues. Like I happened to have been working with a, um, an attorney at the time on a website client. And she was telling me how, you know, the pandemic is destroying relationships. Like people, she, she was in um, arbitration, right? So people want to get divorced. Like instead mm-hmm. of going to, you know, like, I don't know, trial or whatever, like you just go to a moderator, arbitrator, and they'll, you know, they'll take care of it there. It's much more amicable and, and easy. And she was like, business is booming. People are, they, the, <laughs> the courts are closed. So people can't go to the courts but they can do arbitration and mediation virtually. So people was just getting divorced over Zoom. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm not suggesting that people who are in relationships and marriages weren't also going through. Um, but I found in my personal experience, like a lot of the people that were single had the most trouble. I, like you, very much like my wife. Uh, I think she's the bee's knees and I like talking to her and being in close quarters with her. And so being home together during the pandemic was fantastic. I loved it. I wasn't mad at it at all. I was actually more mad when she had to go back. So, you know, that being said, so that being said, I think that, you know, there's been a lot of carryover from, you know, coming out of the pandemic, people were introduced to, you know, this idea that, hey, like maybe I need, you know, to talk to somebody. I'm going through some things. I'm not feeling good. This isn't normal. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just bringing this up because you mentioned, you know, the, the pandemic thing. Um, you know, I think that people realize now that it's important to have a positive attitude. And if you don't, it's not that you're like broken per se, uh, but at the same time, it's also not normal to be down all the time, you know, and if you're, if, if little things that happen throughout the day, you know, what we call first world problems, you know, are like really upsetting you, like, you know, it, it may be a good idea for you to talk to somebody, um, about that. I was in my car maybe two days ago. It was a beautiful afternoon. I believe, I think I dropped my kid off at school. I mean, I dropped my kid off somewhere. I don't remember. And it's sunny and I'm driving and I'm like, I want to hear some David Bowie. I had space oddity in my head. This is ground control. And I'm like, I just, I'm going to play that. So I got, you know, my car is fancy. You hit the button. It's like, play space oddity by David Bowie. Now playing space oddity by David Bowie. And I, I actually, no, I'd actually said play David Bowie mix is what I said. And David Bowie comes on. I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. And after Space Oddity was over, the Rolling Stones started playing. It was painted black. And it's a great song, like, actually. It's an amazing song. And on any other day of the week, I would love to listen to that next. But I asked for a David Bowie mix. And for some reason... <laughs> my smart computer car and my smartphone that it's connected to wasn't smart enough to be like, that's not a David Bowie song. It's just playing a mix of songs that like sound like rock from back in the day. And I was, I was upset. I wasn't like incensed, like, but I wasn't happy. And so I get out of the car. Did did you punch the steering wheel? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so I, I get out of the car and I'm walking back to my house and I'm like, yo, this thing is so annoying. So I'm listening to David Bowie, man. What's the problem? And then I start chuckling to myself. I'm like, come on, first world problems. Come on, first world. Seriously? This is going to bother you today? And so I, I get inside and I say to my wife, I said, I got to tell you something funny. I said, the car did this and I was so annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, my my smart car isn't smart enough to satisfy my sonic desires. <laughs> As I'm driving home on a Tuesday, nowhere to go. Come on. 
<laughs> My ice cream isn't cold enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real problem. <laughs> I don't want to be insensitive to the people who don't like their ice cream mushy. <laughs> Some of us want our ice cream to be nice and solid when we take it out of the fridge. And these are the reasons why you, you really should try to have a positive attitude. We're not living in, uh, you know, um, Ukraine. You know, we're not on the Gaza Strip. Uh, you know, we're not uh, on, you know, any of the places, you know, on the continent where people are going through real strife. Um, <laughs> how many, I'm, I'm not going to do this to you. I'm not going to ask you the question, but a lot of people don't know. Wait, I'm intrigued. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Hey, 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 hey. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. How many, how many countries are there on the continent? Which continent? <laughs> The only continent we refer to as the continent. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume there's around 40. There's more than 40? Mm -hmm. 50? But a lot have broken up into smaller countries. That's the thing, though, right? In the, past like, in the past, like, 20 years, a lot of them have really just broken up into smaller countries. So it's um, 54... Is, okay. if, uh, I, I hope I'm not wrong. The last time I checked, there's 54 countries on the continent of Africa. Okay, so that is, does that include Egypt? Because a lot of people think that Egypt, for some reason, is in the, in the no. you know on the continent Egypt, of Africa for some reason. Egypt is a European nation. <laughs> it's a European nation. <laughs> I mean, like, in all the movies, they're all no, played by yeah. British people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my lord. <laughs> you, you might be confusing some people here. Yeah, Africa is not a country people <laughs> South Africa is a country what? Africa is a continent <laughs> <laughs> it's good yeah, this is an educational show too you know we're <laughs> we, want, we want people to walk away and be uh, informed the, re the reason why I said the continent um, is because I think it's literally just more easily digestible for people um, but also I've, I've personally been on like a bit of a kick, like, like I, I don't like to, I hate, I really do. I genuinely dislike referring to Africa as, um, you know, as a monolith. And I think it's important for black people, for black people, I don't know about anybody else, but I think it's important for black people to be familiar with every single country on the continent so that we can start to address them by country name. And not as we've been taught to do, which is the monolith of Africa. And, and I, I just, I'm putting that on myself and I put it on my family to get educated. You know, um, I, I actually plan on getting out there, hopefully within the next two years, um, you know, making a visit and being, and not going to South Africa and going on safari either. Like, stop it. Um, that's cool. But like, there's a lot I of kinda, other countries. kind of want to go on safari. <laughs> I know everybody goes to South Africa. We're all like, anyway, all right. Nonetheless, all that to say, um, there's a lot of different places, even here in New York, right? Like I could be in, you know, Brooklyn or something, you know, they still shooting in Brooklyn. Like despite gentrification, they still shooting <laughs> in Brooklyn. They still shooting in Harlem. <laughs> despite gentrification is still real. And, you know, if, if you're not dealing with, with those things, um, you can most certainly have a positive attitude and, you know, see the, the positive in your life. Um, and if you are dealing with those things, then it's a deep for conversation and we'll do that one next week. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe in the streets. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> I, won't, I won't even touch that one. <laughs> I, listen, I always have a positive attitude when I talk to you. Oh, thank you. I'm the same here, Fenton. Sorry okay. to piggyback on that, but I'm not. I do have a very positive. You know what? When when Thursdays come up, I'm very excited in the mornings knowing that I get to uh, talk to one of my best friends here. Um, consider you family. 
but definitely positive mindsets are extreme on Thursdays for me. It's a big deal. Because be, people, you should aspire to be somebody that people feel positive around. You know, it's the whole, you know, thermostat, be a thermostat, not a thermometer. Like, you, you should set the tone. And when people, I, I chose today to have a positive attitude when I hopped on here. I'm telling you, bro, I was like, I was, I got the contractor coming over here later. And I'm trying to like, you know, organize stuff at the same time, which is completely separate from the contractor. But I am, I'm a um, spur of the moment type of person. So like I made a decision to go out last night and get all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, well now I have to do that. And like, oh, I got to record the podcast. Like, can we do it at 1020 instead of 10 o'clock? I got to take a shower. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just doing all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm a little overwhelmed. And I, I saw it in my head. Like if I get on there and I, um, you know, cause we usually talk a little bit before we start recording mm-hmm. and I'm like, you're like, Fenton, how's it going? I'm like, oh man, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like how like disingenuous would it be for me to then all of a sudden just flip the switch and be like, hey, Ken, it's the podcast. You know, here we go. How are we doing? You know, and like and pretend to be all excited. Like I, I wouldn't be. So I had to I had to be like, all right, chill. First world problems. Pump myself back up. Be like, dude, like you're good. Life is good. Relax. Like, you know, you got new glasses. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> a lot of new, right? I was looking at them like they looked uh, clear. Yeah. They, yeah. They're totally clear. I it's love kind of them. Dope, though. Yeah, I'm super happy. Like, you, can, I can, you got new glasses and you got a bad attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well just go put on the old glasses and see things through the old lens. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Get it? New glasses, see things through a new lens. It's positive. All right. <laughs> I tried. Somebody got that. Is there an air horn? We have an air horn on here, don't we? Ooh, do we? (laughs) (laughs) The drama king is (laughs) Ben. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Uh, Hands off the off the horn. No, that this is the episode for positive mindset. That positive. <laughs> You're like begging me to hit the horn again. Like, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, this is the episode. It's <laughs> all so good. I know what the rest of my day consists of. I'll be out there digging <laughs> trenches for mulch <laughs> <laughs> with a smile. <laughs> with a smile. Actually, it's good. It's, it's nice out today. So I will be smiling. Look, the hard part is just digging the little trench. The relaxing part is spreading the mulch. If that sounds weird to you, try it out sometime. It's pretty relieving, actually. Spread. Spread. Spread Yeah, because you use the rake. You got to use the rake, and then you take your hands, and you even it out. Does (sighs) does gardening and stuff like that help you to have a positive attitude, a positive, like, mindset? Like, does it, is it relaxing for you? Do you enjoy that? It is relaxing. I do enjoy it, yeah. I like, you know what's relaxing was very relaxing for me, bro? Sanding wood. <laughs> like when we build something and now it's like time to sand and you have to go through all the different grits right. of sandpaper. It's amazing. You're a true Absolutely renaissance man. Bro. Amazing. <laughs> Painter, woodworker. Oh, paintings. Paintings artist. very relaxing too. Paintings very relaxing also. Yeah. I forgot about that. So you 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 partake in activities that you find enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Like you actively make time to do things that are pleasing to you and that are relaxing for you. And I think that is so powerful. And I, I think people need to carve out more time. Like it's really easy to go binge watch, you know, three hours of a show on Netflix or whatever. But imagine if you took three hours doing something that you really enjoy. And also, you're learning. Every time you got to sand something, like you're learning something new. There's no way you can uh, endeavor to get good at something and learn a technique or a skill and not constantly grow. Right? It's like the law of entropy, right? Like anything left alone descends into disorder, right? Right. That's why, you know, 
things get dusty. If you don't constantly dust it, it gets dirty. Your brain, if it's not constantly growing, you're not putting more things into it. Like you're getting dumber. I, <laughs> it's it's science. <laughs> So if you're if you're not doing things that are pleasing to you and de-stressing and relaxing, then the opposite is happening. You're getting more anxious and you're getting more stressed and that stuff builds up. You got to be like Ken. Find time, make time. <laughs> be like Ken. <laughs> I got a hat. Be like Ken. <laughs> I'll get that on a shirt. I love it. I would do that. I'd wear that shirt. Be like, "Who's Ken?" I was like, "Aha. Uh, Let me tell uh, you about uh, Ken." Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> you know, I I enjoy um I enjoy reading books. Oh, here's what's funny actually. I'm Shoot. wearing It's like a horn outside right now. It's so annoying. Prince Akeem. <laughs> uh-huh. It's perfect. <laughs> that is amazing. The spirit of Eddie Murphy is just within you today. <laughs> you know? And it, you know, I'm not going to go on an Eddie Murphy thing, but like, I was here's what I was going to say. I was going to say, okay. even Prince Hakeem took time to learn skills. He learned how to fight. He knew how to do a whole bunch of things. What's cooler than somebody who just knows how to do a whole bunch of stuff? I mean, doesn't everybody love somebody like that? Wow, really? Fencing, huh? <laughs> like, Wow. <laughs> like, and you're a race car driver and you like and you can make a creme brulee like nobody's business. You know, find time to pour yourself into things that you enjoy. And I promise you, you'll find yourself seeing the world through a different lens and, and seeing the beauty in life and having a positive attitude because all the other things, it's like those get pushed down. It's not as important as these things that you choose to elevate. You have to choose what you're going to focus on and you can choose to focus on beautiful and positive things. And I think that'll help. Love the wrap up. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not still on mute because there's this car, car horn going crazy outside and I put myself on mute. And if I didn't record what I just said, I would be very frustrated. <laughs> no, I hear the car horn. I figured it was just the... Uh... The extra sound effects you had in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to get out of here. Go clean. Go clean the rest of those uh, those toys off that floor. Thanks, man. I'm going to go make a mess outside. Have fun. Make a ruckus. All right, y'all. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>